Hello everybody, I'm Andy with Liminal Entertainment Technologies and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up your Stream Deck to act as a matrix control for Zoom. So we'll use Zoom ISO and OSC commands to be able to select users by clicking on their name on our Stream Deck and then routing them to an output and then that output will be available on our network as NDI. So I'll walk you through constructing that and then we'll have that preset available for download if you want to modify it or use it on your own. So without further ado, let's jump over to the computer. We are now looking at the companion emulator and an NDI Studio monitor. And I'm gonna show you what we wanna end up with at the end of this tutorial. We basically wanna be able to select any user who's currently in our Zoom webinar or Zoom meeting, and then we wanna be able to hit what output we route them to. Now the Studio monitor is looking at output one. So if I hit Alex's name and I hit output one, now Alex shows up on that NDI feed. If I wanna see Jeffrey there instead, I can cut immediately by just selecting the name of the person I wanna look at and then looking at them in their view. So it makes it very easy to cut between sources. And of course, I have it set up to be able to do eight sources right now, so I could route them into vMix or something like that and have a lot of compositing options. But at the end of the day, we just want to end up with a Stream Deck profile that lets us select a user and then select where we want to route them to. And that'll act as a video matrix for Zoom. So let's show you how we did that. So I'm going to go full screen, and I'm going to pop over. And the first thing you need to do is grab the companion beta build. Um, if you're watching this shortly after release, the features for Zoom ISO are available in the Zoom OSC module, but only in the beta download. So how do you get that? You go over to your downloads page for companion inside of your user area, and you can go over to this button here, beta builds on the bottom right. You click that, and it's going to open a new page for you with all of the beta builds available, and you just have to click the right one for your platform, and it should be anything after the, um, anything after July 9th, any, any later build than that will contain the latest modules that I'm going to show you in this video. So you just download the one for your platform and install it. Make sure that if you are using Companion already that you back up your profiles so that you don't have any issues there. But if you've backed up your profiles and you're good to go, you're now going to be inside of Companion. So this is the page I was just working on. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this and we'll create a new page. So I'm going to leave this page alone for now. And I'm going to go ahead and jump to page two where we have a clean slate and we're going to build out some new buttons. So the first thing we need to do is make a connection to Zoom ISO. Now Zoom ISO is currently running over my Mac, and if I show you what that looks like, we're currently logged in to the Office Hours Show, which is a daily Zoom webinar. And what we have here is the Zoom ISO settings window, which we talk about in the Getting Started video. We also show you how to log in and do all of that stuff. Something to pay attention to right here is the OSC settings. And this is where we're gonna to have to make some changes in order to be able to communicate with BitFocus Companion. So the transmission IP is gonna be the local IP address of my PC, which is hosting Companion right now. The transmission port, the receiving port, and the output rate take note of. The output rate we wanna to set to as fast as possible so we can have the fastest communication between the applications. And you'll note that the transmission port, i.e. where Zoom ISO is sending out data is 7070, and the receiving port, i.e. where Zoom ISO is receiving data is 9090. So if we go over to my connections, you'll see I don't have any connections yet. All I have to do is search for liminal, and you'll see liminal Zoom OSC shows up. Now, the commands for Zoom ISO exist inside of the liminal Zoom OSC module. So go ahead and add that. And I'm just going to rename it from Zoom OSC to Zoom ISO. Again, you could use both of them together in this in a single instance of the app. So we name it Zoom OSC, but you can readjust this label to whatever you feel is appropriate. The target IP is going to be the private IP address of the Mac which I know from looking into the network settings of the Mac to be 192.168.1.157. That feedback port, we said we're going to be able to listen on 7070 and that we're going to target sending to 9090 by default. Now the subscribe mode, I can subscribe to none. The target list, all panelists are only the people in the gallery view. I'm going to go ahead and subscribe to panelists because this is a webinar, I don't want to see the attendees on my button. So I'm going to hit panelists there, and then I'm going to leave the gallery tracking mode alone, and I'm going to hit save. Now immediately that status indicator goes from error to OK. It means we have a connection now to Zoom ISO, and we'll be able to start to build our buttons. So I'm going to go back to the buttons area where I have a blank page. I'm going to show you how to build a couple of these buttons. So I'm going to go over to the presets area and click on liminal zoom OSC, and I'm going to open list index selection. And now you'll see I'm presenting with some green buttons that have everybody in the webinar's name on it. Um, all the panel is present there. So I'm going to drag them one by one. And again, you can do this so that if you have a 32 key stream deck versus a 15 key stream deck uh, versus a six key stream deck, you can utilize all this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this all out and I'm going to leave two columns on the right available for me to use other actions. So I'm going to begin to drag over my keys and you'll see they turn red because they're not selected. And we'll show you what goes into each of these keys from the preset in a moment. And I'm just going to make sure I leave two columns extra at the end. 
so that I have space to put other buttons as I'm going through this. And I'll leave one row at the bottom so I have some extra space to work as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a button underneath my page navigation to force this list to update. Now by default, it'll automatically update, but if you ever need to jog it, you can go ahead and create a button called list and go to the press actions, look for zoom ISO, and then scroll down to your zoom ISO general local application actions and select from the drop-down list the list command. And this will force an update. So if I shift click, you'll see that it refreshes those buttons there and it, always, it makes sure to remember who's on the panel. So that'll be a helpful button in case you're looking for something like that. Now the next thing we wanna do is actually control zoom ISO. So I'm gonna click in the first column of my free columns over here on the right. I'm gonna create a regular button as before and I'm gonna call this ISO one. So this will send somebody to output ISO one. So I'm gonna to go to the press actions area. I'm gonna look for zoom ISO and Zoom ISO itself has a specific action called Output ISO. The user we want to select is going to be the selection identifier 0 sent to pin 1. So how does that work? So each of these buttons, the buttons with the names, when you look at what the action is for that button that ships with our preset, you'll see that what it does is it toggles the selection state of that user to be uh, index 0 in the list. So when you click on Alex, let's say on the Stream Deck, and it turns green, Alex is now in selection index position zero. So hitting ISO on selection index zero will inherit Alex's information and send it to pin number one. The other thing we want to do is clear the selection so that we don't have anything left over after we're done. So that's going to be a Zoom OSC action and that's going to be under the selections area. It's a selection action and we just want to go clear selection for user selection index zero. So now when I hit Alex ISO 1, you'll see that the green releases from the key. And so Alex is no longer selected after we choose the action we want to route them to. So we're going to repeat that process for the other eight outputs that are going to be existing in the matrix. So I'm just going to uh, go ahead and copy that button. And you can do that with the keyboard shortcut, control C, control V. So I'm just going to do that. And I'm just going to update the name. And I'm going to update the pin number. And that's going to give me a different user or sorry, that's going to give me a different ISO output each time I increment this. So I'm going to go 3, and then output 3, and 4, and output 4, and 5, output 5, 6, output 6, 7, 7, 8, and output 8. And you can build as many of these as you want, depending on how your system is set up, or you can combine multiple zoom ISOs together, whatever you need to do in order to be able to get your routing accomplished, uh, you would be able to do that inside of this companion profile. So now I have um, a sort of a group of people, and I have some actions I can do to route them. So let's look at what we have to do in zoom ISO to get ready for this. So going back to the outputs area of zoom ISO, you're now going to want to select your number of outputs to match what you set up for your stream deck. In this case, I know this computer is capable of doing eight video feeds at 720p. So I'm gonna set myself to 720p and I'm gonna create eight outputs. Now, in the other videos, we've shown you how you can select a user from the drop-down list to get them in that area there. And so you can see if I, if I start to switch that, it's changing the video feed that's available in that spot. But we don't wanna control this through the user interface. We wanna control this through a stream deck because it's optimized for the kind of work that we're going to do. So keep an eye on what's in that entry there as if I select somebody separate, so that it actually is remote controlling this application and routing people into it. So Zoom ISO is now being remote controlled by the Stream Deck. As I select different names on it, it's changing who's routed into that output. And it's also, conversely, it's changing who's inside of the NDI feed. So if you look at the Studio Monitor as I do this, it's changing who's going out to that output. And again, Studio Monitor is looking at output one. So some people have video off, some people have video on, but we're always able to select them just with that one click. So that's what we were doing at the beginning of the video. So again, this will now scale for eight outputs. So if I want, I can go ahead and just start routing. And so I'm gonna switch over to vMix for a second so you can see all eight NDI feeds at once. So we got Alex already routed to two. Now let's just go through and pair them up. So Jeffrey to output two, Carl to output three. We'll put the, why not? Put the WLM meters in output four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like Chad has video off, so I'll put Bill there instead. So great, now I have my eight individual video feeds coming in and on the fly, I can just begin to reassign people any which way I want. So I, all I have to do is click through and select my pairings and then those will be reflected in the main area. So lots of options there in terms of how I could route this up. 
You also have the option, because you're inside of Companion, that you could add for your vision mixer, you could add specific options to control that. So whether it's you know a switcher like the ATEM or a true vision mixer like vMix, you could then start to add in this maybe this blank area down here additional controls that are specific to vMix so that you could do your routing up in this area and then you could do your actual mixing in the bottom area here. It really just depends on the layout that you want to do. But the core commands that you need are, is the ability to use Zoom OSC's dynamic variable system alongside Zoom ISO's control command to be able to build buttons with the names of people on the keys and then have the ability to select and route them to outputs. So lots of options that you could build on top of this. We go, we're gonna go ahead and ship this preset so that you have it available to you to download if you don't wanna set any of it up. Totally understand that. Just grab the preset and get started. Uh, otherwise, I hope this video helps you understand a little bit more about how to configure Companion to use Zoom ISO as a video matrix to bring in participants from Zoom into your vision mixers, switchers, and media servers. If you have any questions at any time, shoot us an email at info at liminalet.com, and be sure to check out the other videos on our channel. I might suggest looking at the vMix tutorial where we're going to take this preset and then actually deploy it inside of a vMix workflow. So we'll see you in that one. Until then, take care.